Hey, what's up everybody and welcome back to Drums and Drams. My name is Cameron and today we're going to be taking a look at this brand new Calumet Farm 15 year old bourbon. Calumet Farm is a brand of Kentucky straight bourbon whiskey that doesn't actually distill any of its own products. They are what we call an NDP, or non-distilling producer, and what that means is that they go out and purchase existing stocks of bourbon from other distilleries, bring that stuff in-house, blend it, bottle it, slap their own label on it, and then bring it to market for all of us. Now, when I think of an NDP, I have two main questions. Number one, where is the bourbon coming from if you're not producing it yourself? And number two, how transparent are you willing to be about what you're putting in that bottle and what you're trying to sell me? Now, with Calumet Farm, they do a great job with transparency and we can pretty much figure out where this stuff is coming from. Now, a lot of these non-distilling producers have NDAs or non-disclosure agreements. So we've got NDPs with NDAs. A lot of them have non-disclosure agreements with the distilleries that they are purchasing bourbon from just as sort of a privacy measure a precaution or whatever you want to say. So they can't actually tell you exactly where it's coming from, but often they can tell you the state of distillation and they can tell you the mash bill. And those two things can really lead you right to the doorstep of wherever this stuff is coming from. So on the label of this Calumet 15, we get the standard information of proof, ABV. In this case, it's non-chill filtered, which is great. But if you get onto the website, you can actually find the mash bill for all of the products in the Calumet Farm line. They have an eight year, a 10 year, 12 year, 14 year, a small batch, <laughs> and now this brand new 15 year. And they all seem to have the same mash bill of 74% corn, 18% rye, and 8% malted barley. Now, if you know anything about mash bills, this points you directly to Barton, AKA 1792. And the fact that this is a Kentucky straight bourbon whiskey means that it's almost assuredly coming from Barton. That would lead you to Bardstown, which is where the distillery is located. And, uh, and the rest, you know, you can really just kind of figure out. Now this falls right in line with other NDPs putting out 12 to 15 year old bourbon with the same mash bill because Barton is known for, you know, selling off old stocks to these producers for them to blend and bottle it themselves. So I think that's all I've got here. Let's talk proof. We have a 105 proof 15 year bourbon. And like I said, this is non-chill filtered. So we have a really solid proof of 105, 52.5% ABV and 15 years. I mean, that is an old freaking bourbon. It's awesome. I'm so excited to try this. So I'm going to nose, taste, review this, kind of let you all know about it. And at the end of the video, I'll do two very quick comparisons. First to the Calumet 14 year, which is last year's release, last spring. And I'm also gonna compare this to the Sam Houston 14, which is another 14 year old product sourced from Barton, so very similar. And it's the one that got a ton of hype in 2020. So let's do the 15 year first. We'll do the comparisons at the end. Let's check this thing out on the nose and see what we get. All right, so right away, you get hit with the age of this bourbon. The the 15 years on the nose is very apparent. You get a ton of oak, like that, that musty, damp, funky oak thing going on in here. Uh, but there's also quite a bit of sweetness, a really nice amount of spice. Yeah, in terms of sweetness, uh, we have almost sort of those flat cherry cola notes. You, you've probably heard me say that or some other whiskey tubers. That note pops up in a lot of aged or high proof Buffalo Trace products. But yeah, there's this flat cherry cola note going on in here, which is like this really syrupy, sweet, dark cherry type thing. Yeah, great amount of spice in this. Um, I could say a little bit of baking spice, but really it's coming across as like black pepper combined with some of those barrel char and oak spice notes. Uh, it's really interesting, slightly bitter. And on the nose here, there's actually just a little bit of minerality, not quite to the level of anything from George Dickel, but it's just enough with the age to make this feel even older, to make it feel a little bit interesting and add sort of a unique structural element to the nose. Yeah, very slight furniture polish, a little bit of chocolate on the nose. It's really good. It's 
definitely a 15 year old bourbon nose. You know what I mean? Uh, there's nothing super bright about this. The banana note that many of us know in a lot of Barton products, especially the 1792 stuff, that stuff is long gone with this amount of age. All right, let's try it on the palate. Cheers. Yeah, right away, you get hit with all of those sweet characteristics and all of that age. It's like, <laughs> it's like flat cherry Dr. Pepper. <laughs> um, I think sort of that Dr. Pepper spice that I get on a lot of these older Barton products, it's there. It comes from the oak. It comes from the barrel char type notes. You get hit with that up front and then all of the oak is right there. And as soon as that hits your palate and starts to develop, the spice kicks in and that carries it through the mid palate into the finish. Uh, it's a really, really great combination of things. I feel like the mouthfeel, the viscosity, and the balance is just right for something like this. You run the risk at 15 years old of getting something that is extremely over oaked and flat. This does not feel that way to me. This feels like it has some life. It's got a little pizzazz, you know, if you want to say it that way. Um, it, it doesn't feel like, I don't know, it doesn't feel labored. Like if you've ever had any of the rhetoric bottlings from Orphan Barrel, you know, like the 23 year, when you have some of those oak bombs, they just feel flat. They feel sluggish, if that makes sense. This doesn't have that. With, with the proof sitting at 105 and with that amount of spice, this thing has a lot of interest in it, even with those older and really sweet, dense, sticky notes. All right, let's do one more sip. Yeah, I really like this stuff a lot. A little bit of the dark chocolate coming through there on that second sip. I mean, as you continue sipping this, it's going to feel a little bit flatter as your palate acclimates to the spice and the proof and everything like that. But all in all, I really like this expression. And, uh, and like I said, we're going to compare this in a second to a couple of other comparable products and just see how these all stack up with each other. Um, in terms of the finish here, it's not an incredibly long finish. I would say it's an appropriately long finish for that 105 proof. The spice really hangs on in the back of the throat, you know, in the back of the palate into the throat. And then in like sort of the front and mid palate, you're really left with a lot of that mouth raw, blah, 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 I can't talk. Mouth-watering sweetness is what I meant to say. And a lot of that sort of musty, funky oak, slightly drying, slightly bitter, but very well balanced, like I said. Uh, so what we're gonna do now is compare this to the Calumet 14 year, see how those things stack up, and then compare it to the Sam Houston 14. I have to pour myself a little bit more because I've run out here. Uh, so we will be right back and we'll get to this first comparison. All right, so I've poured myself some more Calumet 15 here and we're gonna compare it to last year's 14 year release. And I've gotta say thank you to Roy R for sending in this sample of the 14 year for this comparison. So I'm first gonna nose this very quickly and then put it next to the 14 year and see what we get. Wow, I mean, this is a significant difference here. It's worth noting before I start talking about this that the 15 year, as I mentioned, is 105 proof and the 14 year is only 96.2. So let's just round this off and say it's a it's about a 5% ABV difference, but that difference is very apparent on the nose here. Yeah, this 14 year is coming off significantly flatter than the 15 year. There's not nearly the interest of the spice going on here. There's actually a lot more oak, even though it's younger, and that probably has to do with the fact that it's diluted down to a lower proof. Uh, you lose a lot of the dark fruit characteristics. It gets replaced with even more oak, even more of that sort of uh, furniture polish type characteristic. And there's even a little bit of banana on this. Um, that Barton banana has sort of found its way in here at a lower proof. So on the nose right now, this 15 year. Yeah, wow. I mean, <laughs> it is so full of life compared to this this 14 year, the 14 year feels a little bit dead, a little static and boring, kind of reminds you of that Elijah Craig 18 oak, you know, I know a lot of us have mixed feelings about that. But those older lower proof oak bombs, that's what I'm getting on the 14 year. So let's try it on the palate and see what we get. It's still a great bourbon on the palate, again, a little bit flat, but definitely more spice than you would expect uh, on the nose. 
The palette hits you first with just a ton of that musty oak and furniture polish. The development doesn't quite go as far as you want it to. It doesn't kind of ramp up to the point that you really want it to. You get some dark fruitiness, but nothing like the, the depth and richness and spiciness and pizzazz of the 15 year. So let me taste the 15 year one last time. Oh my gosh, night and day difference here, night and day. The 14 year has a time and a place, absolutely. It's very relaxed, you know, it's for a particular mood, but this 15 year for me, in terms of its structure, its construction, its development, its flavor profile and its depth, absolutely the winner of this comparison. All right, and for the final comparison on today's video, I'm gonna take this Calumet 15 and put it up against last year's Sam Houston 14, which is one of the most talked about releases and hype releases of 2020. The Sam Houston is also sourced from Barton and it's coming in only one year younger than the Calumet 15. Same exact mash bill, so I'm expecting a lot of similarities and a couple of differences. And the other thing I should note is that the Sam Houston is at 98 proof, whereas this Calumet is at 105. So there's about a 3% ABV difference here. I'm gonna start again with the Calumet and then go to the Sam Houston. Wow, I did not expect these to be quite so different. The Calumet, again, has a lot of those really nice, rich, dark, spicy characteristics, but it's actually coming across pretty dry now when I compare it to the Sam Houston. The Sam Houston um, has a lot of like juicy, ripe fruit type notes, which I, I don't know that I've ever really picked those up before in this particular bourbon. But when you put it next to something like this Calumet 15, um, which has, again, sort of that flat cherry Dr. Pepper note in there, it's almost like the fruits are really dried out in the Calumet and in the Sam Houston, they're just really fresh and ripe. The Sam Houston just overall is a little bit more lively in terms of the fruit, whereas the Calumet is a little bit more lively in terms of the spice. So that would be my main difference here. Again, this seems like it's gonna come down to a mood thing as I compare these on the nose, but let's taste the Sam Houston on the palate and see how it does. All right, so the Sam Houston is a little bit more static on the palate. There's not a whole ton of development going on here. It's not like it really blossoms necessarily. It sort of arrives very just sort of flat, it kind of grows a little bit and then it just gently comes down. It's, it's, it's a more delicate pour, it seems like. I used to think of the Sam Houston as being very strong and in your face, but compared to this Calumet, it seems more delicate. It seems more rounded out. And I mean, for God's sake, it seems more smooth <laughs> as, you know, I, I know some people are gonna kill me for saying that, but yeah, it's, it's almost like a gentle wave on the palate. Whereas the Calumet, uh, I'm gonna taste it here. I'm sure this is gonna be a little bit more punchy. <laughs> Oh yeah, you know, that Calumet has direction to it. You know, when it hits your palate, it goes somewhere. The Sam Houston's very placid and it just kind of hangs out and chills. I don't think there's a right or a wrong answer here. I think this, again, comes down to mood. I would say that the Sam Houston 14 for me is better than the Calumet 14. It has just a little bit more richness to it. It's just better constructed. But next to the 15 year Calumet, that just comes down to what your preference is at the time. I think the Calumet 15 is a great bottle. The MSRP is about 130 bucks. That's expensive. I totally understand that. But in the grand scheme of things, with other people sourcing Barton, you know, Barton bourbon and, and bottling it themselves, especially around that 12 to 14 year age range, this is actually coming in pretty cheap compared to some of those others. Uh, I got this, yeah, I think at MSRP here in Ohio for that $130. And... I would probably buy another one. To be honest, I think the value is pretty darn even for what you're getting. I mean, it's not often that you find a 15-year-old bourbon at this proof also that's not watered down to 90 or something like that uh, for this price point. So I have to say that I'm gonna recommend the Calumet 15. I didn't know how I would feel, but after doing this review, after making these comparisons to these comparable products, for me, it, it's probably gonna be my choice out of all three of the bottles that we've looked at today. So. If you do have the Calumet 15 in your area, I'm not sure if they're gonna fly off shelves or not. The 14 year is still hanging around a lot of places, but maybe the 15 year is gonna be different. So if you do have it in your area, I would recommend going and picking up a bottle if you can find it at the MSRP around that $130. But I think that's all I've got for today's video. Very interesting comparisons here. 
Thank you all so much for watching. If you enjoyed the video, go ahead and drop a like below, hit that subscribe button and hit the bell notification if you wanna know when I'm going live, which is at least once a week and when new videos are coming out. And if you like what you're seeing from Drums and Drams, you wanna help support the channel and get access to some extra behind the scenes content, uh, you can check out the link below in the description to my Patreon. We're building a great community over there, having a ton of fun, doing some exclusive live streams and other things. So if that's something that you're interested in, it's a great way to support the channel and, uh, and you can do it there. Otherwise, I'm gonna get out of here. Thank you all so much for checking this video out. Cheers, and I'll see you next time here on Drums and Drams. Thank you.